What's going on everybody? Tim from Tierfond Orbital. This is going to be a little bit of a longer video today. I do have a build, commission, install that I do need to go over for the client, but I also wanted to take a little bit to touch on chassis design. A lot of people have been asking uh, how I, like what is my process, design process from start to finish and what, what are my recommendations and, and things like that. So I'm gonna touch on what my process is a little bit in this video. I've been meaning to do like either a series or a live stream of like the chassis process, my chassis process from start to finish. Uh, I feel like that would help some people um, certainly watching other people do things helps me. I mean, I could read manuals all day long, but it's not until I actually start, uh, watching it being done and doing it myself that I actually learn. So that'll be coming up in the next couple of months, hopefully. Uh, but, but as for today, I just wanted to touch on, uh, what I typically do for, for chassis. I've been doing some more, um, I've been getting a lot more detailed Greebly work into my chassis. And, you know, it. I feel like I've designed a, a pretty streamlined workflow for myself and that's how I achieve that look. So I'm gonna talk about it, right? Um, I, so I mentioned this offhand in some of my previous videos, but I lean very heavily on an application called Shaper 3D. Now, Shaper 3D is an app that was built for the iPad Pro. Uh, and what I like about Shaper 3D is not only is it mobile, right? Um, but I can utilize the Apple Pencil to get more granular details in my Greeblies. I just feel like working in the 3D environment on Shaper is just so intuitive and a lot easier at times than Fusion. Fusion is a super, super robust program, but for what, for getting the basic shapes of your chassis and even moving around some of the Greeblies, I feel like with Shaper 3D, it's a lot easier. And I can use my Apple Pencil. Like, look, there have been, there have been times where I can just sit on the couch, uh, get my calipers out and a hilt, and just start measuring and start designing while I'm watching like a movie or something. I've done this while traveling, like I can just design chassis in my free time. So I lean really heavily on Shaper. Let's take a look at it. So this is Shaper 3D, and this happens to be the chassis that I'm going to be talking about today. But this this is Shaper, right? It's a CAD modeling program um, that I, you know, if I want to, let's, let's just really quickly, I'll just do it really quickly. Like if I want to design, start designing a new chassis, I, I get all of my measurements and I start designing. Like I just, you know, start getting my basic shapes and it can get even as granular and detailed as importing Greeblies. And, you know, re I can get very, very detailed with sh reshaping some of the walls of my Greeblies. Uh, placement of the Greeblies is really easy in, in Shaper. Like here, for example, here's a, this is the chassis I'm working on for the Tierfond Scrap Series. Uh, but all, all of this, this entire chassis was designed in Shaper. And what I'll do after this particular one is I'll export this as a step and bring it into Fusion for some of the final granular detailed stuff, right? Uh, but just a really, really robust yet simple uh, application. Like I've got a folder for all my Greeblies on each side uh, and each of those are their own steps. So yeah, it's, it's just a great little application. I just love that it's mobile. It, I love that it's intuitive. I love that I can use my Apple Pencil. Um, so I also need to talk about Greeblies, right? I keep saying Greeblies, Greeblies, Greeblies. What is a Greebly? Well, there are, it's a very broad term, uh, but for me, as far as chassis design is concerned, Greeblies are, st it's stuff. Uh, different parts of things that make something look more detailed and uh, make the break up the composition of the shape a little bit. Uh, it's just parts for me. You know, I've got greeblies that are vents, pipes, tubes, circuitry, all kinds of stuff, right? So, if I could suggest another thing, other than maybe trying out Shaper 3D or using Shaper in tandem with Fusion, it would be to get a solid 
foundational library of Greeblies. Uh, I, I feel like the fact that I've got such a, an extent, it's not extensive, I don't have a lot, but I've got a library of Greeblies that I've created that I've gotten to a point where I can now just import these Greeblies as steps into my chassis design, resize them as I see fit, and, and from there, it's just a matter of composition and putting Greeblies in the right place as to make, make it not look like jumbled up and just like it's randomly placed there, right? Uh, so I, I, I've got a really good foundational library of Greeblies. Like I've got a folder of all vent Greeblies. I've got a folder of pipes Greeblies. I've got a folder of uh, circular Greeblies, like all, all kinds of different, different Greeblies that I utilize in my chassis now. And what I also like is in Shaper, if I'm creating these Greeblies in Shaper, I can export them, export them as a step and I've got a network drive and they all sit on my network drive. That way I can just import them into Shaper or import them into Fusion very easily. Uh, and it, I, I feel like I've created a pretty seamless workflow for myself. So yeah, that's just a quick, a quick rundown on my chassis design process. Like let's come into Fusion right now. Okay, this is the chassis in question. So, you know, like I showed you on Shaper, I got the majority of these Greeblies, I placed them in Shaper 3D, okay? Uh, they are all their own separate uh, step file. I've got them all in this folder here, so they're grouped. Uh, but when I import into Fusion, I do that not only to keep a backup because Fusion, I've got the uh, version of Fusion where it stores in the cloud as well. Um, but I also, the thing that I've noticed about Shaper is you can't really do embossing. So I do import the final step into Fusion to get my, you know, logo embossing, uh, to get some of the text embossing and some of the more granular stuff like measurement wise, uh, I can do in Fusion. And then, and then export as a, as a STL and print, right? So, I mean, that's that's pretty much that's pretty much it. I if if I was to make any suggestions, it would be, I mean, mainly really, if you're already using Fusion, great, just get a foundational library of Greeblies down. Um, I, it's just if, for me, Shaper is great in that it's mobile. So like I'll sit, like I said, I'll I'll sit sit down on the couch and just design some Greeblies like Andor has been running recently so I'll throw Andor on and like keep an eye out in the background because there's Greeblies everywhere in this show and just start designing stuff uh, and then export it as a step and then I'm good to go and I have it in my library so that's really it I, I uh like I said I, I feel like I've, I've created a very good workflow for myself uh in this this way you know and I started off I started off just with doing grooves and trying to um you know import png uh like files and try and do an emboss that way on the chassis and just like was never never coming out the way i liked it until i figured out how to actually like design greebly work in shaper and just the fact that i can export it as a step is, is a huge bonus so that's it right so let's talk about this thing right so this is a scrap flex that was sent to me by the client. This is a custom saber shop scrap. Uh, so let's talk about how to use the hilt. We will talk about the chassis a little bit and then we will throw a blade in it and then I'll let you go. You can stop listening to me ramble, right? So here it is. This is, as I said, this is, it looks to be, in fact, I'm pretty sure these are all custom saber shop parts. Okay, so we've got a pommel and a grip section. These are all one piece. Client sent this to me already weathered and wrapped. Making our way to the middle section, we do have a Graflex clamp. Uh, so the request, one of the requests from the client was to utilize, uh, he actually sent me this wiring harness. Um, and this wiring harness, I believe, is specifically for a Graflex clamp setup. We've got two switches, top and bottom, and there's some uh, 2020, 1515 NeoPixels down the center. Uh, so I tried my best to use this. Uh, however, it just was not going 
as planned. Okay, you'll notice, so these buttons are not the buttons that shift with it. Initially, first, the first thing that happened is one of the heads popped off the, the buttons that shipped with this, so I had to remove both and add two new ones, and it just wasn't working out uh, with space and fitment. Uh, so I, I made my own. Okay, so underneath the clamp, there are, there's a 2020 NeoPixel strip with two tactile switches, top and bottom. And these are your main and aux. And the clamp card retains, uh, retains itself as the switch, switch box, right? Making our way up, you know, the client did put some greeblies around the outside of the hilt. And coming up top, we've got, there is a knurled brass thumb screw that acts as the blade retention. However, this did not have enough bite uh, for my, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it didn't have as much bite as I wanted it to to grab the blade. So I did pop another uh, hole and put a set screw there just to get some some extra extra grip on the blade. Okay, well, let's talk about the chassis. So to get at the chassis, you unscrew the grip. So the second request from the client was to get an OLED screen in this build. So there is an OLED here. Uh, we've got a 28 millimeter speaker. We've got uh, room for the profi board to sit in this tray. This does, this is press fit. It'll pop up if need be, but there's room to get your SD card out as well as like a 90 degree USB connector there. And here's your battery tray and we've got a kill switch. Nice and simple, okay? So let's talk about how to use it. This is your negative, springside negative, as we always say. You want to, I'm gonna make sure it's off. You want to pop your battery in, hit your kill switch. Here's the OLED. Okay, and so with each font, this will animate differently. Okay, so let's talk, let's come down, let's talk about that now. Well, actually, so first of all, I do want to say now that I've got the grip off. So each font, so shout out to Brian Connor again. <laughs> uh, his videos, if, if you haven't checked out his videos, he's, um, I mean, he's a profi board guru, in my opinion. Uh, but he also does a series of videos for, I mean, he does a bunch of stuff, like, but he, he did a series of videos on OLEDs and programming OLEDs that was incredibly helpful and still was helpful for this build because it takes me a while to grasp onto some things. I have to re-watch videos and re-read stuff. Uh, so, you know, the OLED on Profi is, is robust. It's not as easy to configure as on CFX, but it does almost everything that the CFX does. You just have to make sure that there are correctly named files in each of your font folders. So I set this up so that there's a different screen when you boot for each font. There's a different screen when you activate for each font. And then there's a different screen saver uh, once it's gone idle. Okay. So it's super robust. Brian, thanks for the video. <laughs> um, I actually, I'm watching his video on... Um, font creation as well, some audacity, audacity uh, tutorials. Anyway, so that OLED is different for each font. Yeah. Such a long pre on for that. So here's Durmfire, and there's the screen, and then once it times out, it'll go to battery monitor. At some point. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Uh, so they're all different. There's uh, a different screen for that font. So, and every font, this this clamp card will animate differently. Okay. So nice and easy. So when you get your battery in, you pop your grip back on. Okay. And uh, twist to activate is on. Twist the deactivator is on. Let's put a blade in it. Okay, so as I mentioned, there, you can use the knurled thumb screw as your blade retention, uh, but also I would tighten that brass set screw that I added as well. So put your blade in so it's resting on those PCBs. Tighten your knurled thumb screw as well as. That's cool. Oh, there it is. As well as your brass threaded thumb, thumb screw that I, that I added. Okay, and then you're ready. To
So I put a bunch of different, all kinds of different fonts on here, but it does, it does feel like you are, uh, to the client, it feels like you're an old school, original trilogy guy like myself. Uh, so I, I, I stuck to mostly character fonts on this. Clash works. So your so your top on your clamp card, the top button is your main, the bottom is your aux. Let's see what else we've done. So that's it. Very quick rundown on this really, really cool scrap. Uh, I also, you know, like I said, I, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what my chassis design process is. Uh, a lot of people have been asking and it looks super complicated, uh, but it's not. Uh, and that is only because I have a very, very, very uh, robust, I would call it robust, library of Greeblies. Uh, so that has allowed me to just really streamline my workflow and make designing uh, more of a uh, composition process, right? So now all I really have to do is, you know, update my Greeblies once in a while, get new ones in there, and place them. It's all about placement and making it look aesthetically pleasing. And that's it. I mean, just that's really just my, my workflow um, is that simple. So I hope this helped somebody. Uh, to the client, thank you very much for trusting me with this build. To the viewers, thank you very much for watching. If anyone has any questions or comments or criticisms, <laughs> please let me know. Uh, I would appreciate the feedback. And, you know, like and subscribe. And if you don't want to do those things, it's fine too. Uh, I'm just here to try and help people. So, thanks for watching. May the force and the scrap be with you always. Later, everybody.